Hello, welcome to Biotechnica's TS3, the very own show where we talk about news, views and reviews from across the biosciences industry. And today we come across to you with some great news, some great reviews and some great insights from across the industry. I'm your host Shekhar Suman and this is episode number seven. In this episode, I'm dividing this episode into five parts and it is given in the timeline you can uh, shift through the parts according to uh, your choice and uh, so the first part is about the CSIR net exam a lot of students like hundreds of students messaged me last week that okay yeah we have the exam notification but we have some problems so the exam uh, notification had two problems and uh, surprisingly our uh, students solved one of them by themselves by approaching NTA and NTA being uh, responsive and that uh, sorted the issue. So the issue was uh, students who had less than 55% marks in their BSc, they could not um, apply and that's a glitch actually because uh, CSR allows them, them to apply. So uh, a lot of students were writing to me, even in fact, I also spoke to NTA officials, higher NTA officials, and I got a response that they're working on this and uh, it was a weekend. So by weekday, it will be done. And yes, by Monday afternoon, I guess it was fixed. So that's a win for all the aspirants, but there, there still is an issue which uh, all of you are facing. And that is somebody who's writing gate as well as CSIR net next year. So uh, the dates are clashing, 5th and 6th February is GATE as well as CSIR NET and a lot of students have been writing to me saying that, you know, uh, we should take a call on this, we should talk to the higher authorities. So uh, what we did is uh, now that uh, Dr. Anjan Ray is no longer a part of ScholarSense because a lot of students were sending him a lot of queries which was personally impossible for him to answer. So he, um, you know, I directly messaged him and he replied to me and he said uh, he responded to this in a uh, timely manner I, I asked him that um, you know there's a clash between the exams in february so what is the step which is being taken by nta and he responded that we are discussing this with nta and we will let you know as soon as there is a decision so yes nta as well as csir hrdg is aware of this issue which is the date clash and probably they will come up with the solutions okay so that's uh, the first part of this show which i would like to highlight okay now let's move on to the other parts of the show which is equally important and this is all for all the students and researchers who are planning who are who are doing research and mostly you know our research is based off based on google right we depend on google heavily for researching anything so I want to talk about the Google paradox, which I have discovered in past, uh, I think three years ago. And this paradox is a problem with all of you, all the researchers, okay? Now, what exactly Google is doing is they're customizing your research, I mean, the search results according to the location where you are in. And that means a researcher in India, if he's on a go normal Google search, He'll never see the responses of scientists from uh, other countries or maybe or, uh, never discover websites of other countries where such research is also going on, similar research. So basically, this is a Google paradox because it's not allowing you to get out of the box. Okay, it is boxing you inside the location where you are in. It may be showing you relevant re results, but... As a researcher, remember, you have to always go on uncharted territories, right? So I will recommend all the researchers out there and all the students, if you are in uncharted territories, you are not getting results or you you, you feel that there, there must be something which um, is missing, which is not there in Google search, then definitely you should use a VPN. Okay, I personally recommend ExpressVPN. It's a good one. And otherwise, if you want a free one, there's a touch VPN, which you can use, but it's not that good. Express is the best. So Express VPN you can use. And uh, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just recommending you because I personally use them and it's good. So what happens with the VPN is you can change the location. Probably you can change it to Moscow. You can change it to Beijing or Hong Kong or New York or, uh, you know, London 
in so what really happens is you start getting relevant results for that location so probably uh, you're researching on uh, the latest uh, cancer drug or cancer research when you search by changing location you get even better results okay so that's a part which i wanted to highlight here guys uh, as a researcher you have to always be in uncharted territories you have to always keep looking for things around the world and google is not allowing you to not intentionally but probably yes because they want to customize their google you know uh, search results so i would always recommend using a vpn whenever you're researching and you're not getting relevant results for your research so that's the second part of my uh, show today so uh, moving ahead i would like to bring your attention to uh, new research in fact it has been there since a long time i heard it over the weekend and that's called innovators dna it's a research by a harvard business school um, uh, scientist and three or four uh, professors have come together to do develop this research and uh, the question they have asked is how to develop research skills or research ac acumen and uh, the link to this book i'm putting in the description you must read it so there are five skills which you must develop as a researcher or even a student a uh, research student so the first one is associating okay so what's associating it's like you have to look for cross domain functions and basically interdisciplinary sciences or you know look for things which are being applied in other parts of the world in other things other fields and think how can this be applied into your field your research okay that's associating and a beautiful example of this i can give you when we were building our um, product for csir net coaching uh, we found out that in the it industry there's something called as chat support and uh, people who have doubts and queries they can ask and get it clarified and then you know uh, use the product so we used that chat support thing and we that this was way back in 2006 and we brought it into our sector and for past 15 16 years uh we've been writing this chat support via doubt i mean doubt solving via chat support that's uh all we achieved because of associating so you know probably you are researching on again say suppose uh, hiv or cancer look for uh, you know medicines or look for uh, chemical agents being used for other diseases and what are the if effect or impact here you can see that remdesivir was being used for the covid initially right so that was what that was that innovation happened because of associating so that's the first point which they make in this book innovators dna the second one they talk about is questioning and of course that's uh, how we arrive at research results that by questioning right like we question that why it should be this way why not that way in fact this particular show is also a part of questioning that why there are so many shows for other uh, things or regular things but nobody talks about biosciences so probably we should do it so you know when you question it when you question some stereotypical things that's where you arrive at a better way like elon musk asked a question why do you need gasoline or petrol or diesel to run a vehicle or um, you know um, probably again elon musk asked this uh, critical question why do you need a cell phone tower for internet why can't you directly beam from satellite in fact i once upon a time asked this question to my teacher that uh, why don't we just inject atp into our blood why do we need to consume food so, you know there are various ways uh, you can arrive at results but the best way is questioning right so the second thing which you should develop is questioning the third which uh, the right is uh, all about observation observing in fact while you're watching this video you're observing me right and like when you go and watch anything you you're in a lab you are doing something you're observing you most of the time you're observing your uh, teammates or classmates or your um, you know uh, pi uh, project investigator guide that's how you learn and not just learn that's how you you know by observing you can apply those things into your research so that's a very interesting aspect of your research observation okay the next pointer which they make is experimenting of course you have to experiment but you know experimentation has various ways i can recommend you a, a beautiful book the link i'm giving in the description that's another uh, book which i would recommend for innovation for research and uh, the author there writes in detail about experimentation and how can you 
you know, even pick out inspiration from a dustbin, you know, probably something thrown in the dustbin that also can be inspiration for your research. So that's a uh, great um, thing to do. So, of course, experimenting. The fifth one and very important one, which I, I would like to highlight here is networking. You know, networking helps you reach anywhere, you know, uh, like who knew that uh, 30 days ago that I will be able to directly talk to the head of HRDG or who knew uh, 10 years ago that we will be able to sit across us table and uh, talk like this right so networking is something which is very important and if you want to do networking linkedin is the best place youtube is the good place and of course email you know email is a i would say um, what do you call um, underdog nowadays but email really works you know just dropping an email a cold email also works okay and many people drop me a cold email and um, i will not say 100 percent, but yes I think 70% of the times I respond. So yes, networking is a boon for all the researchers. So five points quickly, associating, questioning, observing, experimentation, and networking. These are five pointers which you should develop as a researcher. And the book from where I'm picking these points is in the description below. Please re listen to that book or, what, or read that book. It's amazing, okay? So this brings me to the third part, uh, sorry, fourth part of today's show, and that is, a good news uh, for all the researchers in fact after listening to this you'll feel like you should go fa do farming and the story goes like this recently the uh, indian institute of petroleum research Dehradun tweeted that successfully biofuel has been accepted and certified by none other than our indian air force right so indian air force has gone ahead and uh, certified the uh, biofuel developed by IIPR, which is Indian Institute of Petroleum Research. And this brings me to another uh, aspect, which is just imagine short term crash, uh, cash uh, crops uh, can generate all this biofuel, which can be used as jet fuel, uh, biofuel as a jet fuel and in Indian Air Force. So Basically, it's a win-win situation. The farmers get paid heavily because that. And uh, now IIPR is looking for researchers and farmers and people who have a piece of land who would like to commercialize because they want to go from zero tons today to 15,000 tons of biofuel in the next probably one or two years. So I think this is a great opportunity for um, the farmers and people who um, want to you know, be a researcher, still be a farmer or someone who is interested in biofuels. So yes, uh, very soon Indian Air Force will be, uh, you know, placing orders with you for uh, biofuel. So if you want to do that, please get in touch with IIPR. The Hradun link is given in the description with the news and that will help you. So with this, uh, this brings me to the last part of today's show, uh, which is not the last part, the second last part. Second last part of the show where uh, I want to highlight the hiring of uh, the CEO of Twitter, the new CEO of Twitter, who is who happens to be Indian. And of course, Microsoft CEO, Google CEO, all the CEOs are uh, Indians nowadays in US, right? But um, another interesting point, the Moderna vaccine, which was uh, um, created, it was created by a bioinformatician who is from India, right? So you can see Indians going abroad, contributing so much to the world, I want to leave you, you with this question today that why can't we do something so that they stay back in India? Okay, so probably um, creating lucrative research opportunities for them, creative uh, entrepreneurial opportunities for them will help and nobody else can do it, we can do it. So probably if you are from the government and if you're listening to me, there needs to be a heavy policy decision change which can improve the quality life of researchers. They should be paid the right remuneration which is not at par beyond the industry standards. See, industry just follows the SOP most of the time but these researchers go in and really do things which get com gets commercialized in future. So I think uh, researchers must um, get a pay hike probably. 
So with this, we come to an end of our show. I have a very interesting question coming in from Mr. Ram Krishna, and he says, "What can I do to become the Abdul Kalam of biosciences?" So very interesting question, uh, Mr. Ram Krishna, and what you're asking is beautifully encompassed by Abdul Kalam himself. And if you look at it, he dedicated his life to the field. right and that's how he was called a missile man of india so if you really want to be the biotech man or bio man or something like that of india you need to dedicate your life to the research community you need to uh, work day in day out in best or the worst conditions and dedicate yourself to the cause keep researching keep making india proud the more we get there that is where you can become the abdul kalam of um 2030 probably but it um uh, you know is something which uh, we are here to see so that i hope that answers your question so you have to dedicate your life to the field and that will take care okay so there is another question from sorov he says that can you give us a basic math scores and he has commented below the last uh, sunday's video which says uh, which talks about how to improve maths for biology students so yes sorov uh definitely in future we'll try but as at this juncture our hands are tied too many things we're doing so yes in future we'll look into this and definitely try to do that so uh moving ahead i can also see some questions uh from our uh researchers so shilpa shilpi jha says that i've done my bsc biotechnology and now i'm pursuing msc life sciences please suggest some posts i should apply in a private company or industries So I think uh, Shilpi, you should go to Biotechnica, check out the job section. That's the best place to be in if you're looking for jobs, and it'll definitely help you. Personally speaking, be- even before you get into the job hunt phase, you should do it. You should get into the skill hunt phase. Look for skills which you require to you know inculcate in yourself. Once the skills are ready. once you are ready with the skills job hunt becomes easy and companies take you with both hands so that's where uh, i would like to end the show today thank you so much for watching this show and i'll see you in the next one in the meanwhile you have got some got some question some comments some things which you agree or disagree please go ahead and put in the comment section and i would love to i would love to answer them right and for all those who are preparing for csr net prepare well I'll see you soon in our next video. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.